Worldwide, the demand for high-quality food is rising. This requires intensive cultivation methods, such as the use of assimilation light in greenhouse horticulture. These lamps require large amounts of electricity, however, resulting in a high CO2 emission. Can LED light help reduce the CO2 emissions in greenhouse horticulture? Climate Kick aims to find out through the carbon lead project. In this project, Wageningen University and Research works together with Bayer Crop Science, Philips, INRA and Startlife to reduce the carbon footprint of greenhouse horticulture based on LED lighting. In recent years, they've been designing and demonstrating different systems in an experimental tomato greenhouse. In the Carbon LED project, we aim at designing and evaluating LED-based production systems. And it's not as simple as just replacing uh, the traditional HPS lamps by LEDs. A traditional HPS lamp emits quite a lot of heat, leading to uh, too high temperatures in the greenhouse, window opening and loss of heat and CO2. In designing a lead-based production system, we have to, have to optimize all elements. We have to pick the best LED system, we have to look at where it should be positioned in the greenhouse and we have to pick the best varieties which perform well under lead lighting and only then we can achieve a low carbon lead based production system with high yield and high quality. An important part of the project is of course the lights themselves. Being a major producer of LED lights, Philips, as partner in the project, can supply the know-how. The newest generation LED lights has an energy efficiency of 3.3 micromoles per joule. This is almost twice as efficient as conventional HPS lights. LEDs also produce less heat, which enables better climate control in the greenhouse, contributing to optimizing production. LEDs have one more benefit, and that is the opportunity to choose a targeted spectrum. It's been proven that a combination of red and blue LEDs works very well for tomato production. This research is showing that far red also plays a role here. One of the questions in the carbon lead project was, are some tomato varieties better equipped for LED lighting than others? And if so, why? This question was answered by the breeding specialists of Bayer Crop Science. We as a breeding company are experimenting with lead and different vegetables and try to find the optimal combination. In this particular experiment, where we apply far red light, we see large differences between different varieties. Some of them respond neutral, some of them respond really positive for yield. This gives us room for selecting the best variety. All of this has produced stunning results. The carbon footprint of LED-based production systems can be reduced considerably compared to conventional lighting systems. Furthermore, combining spectrum of the LEDs with the most suited plant variety resulted in more and larger tomatoes. On the whole, yield increased by up to 25%. What we're seeing here is a very successful example of the kind of partnerships that we are supporting. It's a very exciting innovation. We've supported this project for, for more than two years and we've seen it literally growing into something very successful with potentially enormous CO2 savings in the, in the sector and we're looking forward to continue working with this consortium to bring it even further.